I'm quite surprised that we've had the numbers that have turned out today in a relatively short period. I notice that there's various individuals representing all sections of our community in Swindon, and that's very pleasing to see. The unjustified and disproportionate assault of Israel's government on the people of Gaza is most definitely a crime. The tax of the last three weeks have fitted the fifth greatest military power in the world against the military. It is not a war, it is a massacre. We really need to glance at the casualty figures to see this. 1,000 Palestinians dead compared with 13 Israelis. One death on either side is too many. But the disproportionate slaughter of Palestinian civilians in a so-called targeted Israel strike is terrifying. May I say thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for turning up. This is a very important issue. Any time anyone goes to war, it's a very serious issue, any conflict. And this conflict is seen dead in the Middle East, which we do not want, is unwarranted. As, as, as Derek was saying, all you will get is a spiral of violence. What I'm calling for is a very simple request. However, it will not be a simple process to get there. That's peace. Peace on both sides. We don't want to see any more dead. I don't want to see any more Israeli dead. I don't want to see any more Palestinian dead. I think everybody who's not involved in this conflict should be indirectly getting out, getting their governments, speak to one of our MPs later, sorry Anne, and to tell them what we want is peace and do everything we can through the UN, through our voice in the UN, through World Guns, to get peace in the Middle East. It's been going on too long. I visited um, Gaza last March as part of an all-party group um, to see what was happening in Gaza. It was awful, it was tough then. I went to Shifa Hospital, which is one of the, is that better? I went to Shifa Hospital, which is one of the hospitals uh, dealing with the uh, dreadful situation of the, uh, the wounded and the dying. And when we went to Shifa, we discovered that a three hour power cut at Shifa would immediately kill 80 children and adults because of the uh, medication they were on. A three day power cut, which wasn't unusual then, uh, would kill another hundred people. And one of the tragedies of this, what we saw last year, was the UN UNRWA building new homes for the refugees um, who were living in very squalid conditions after 60 years. Those new homes will have been destroyed. I've uh, just joined the newly launched Labour Friends of Palestine and I will work with my colleagues and comrades at the House of Commons for peace and I hope we will hear that there is a ceasefire this weekend. Thank you. What to do about the situation? Clearly at the moment Israel believe that they have to defend themselves from rocket attacks. The rocket attacks are wrong, but the Palestinian people do not have a voice. And when people have their voice removed, they turn to violence. With the rocket attacks going into Israel at the moment, the Israeli people believe they need to defend themselves. This promotes extremism. The people in Israel that want this violence get more and more momentum for every rocket that lands in Israel. And for every incursion into Gaza, the Palestinian extremists get more and more mainstream. The obvious solution is to call an immediate ceasefire on both sides. This needs to be policed by somebody other than just the Palestinians and the Israelis themselves. The UN needs to be given real teeth and real power to be able to deal with the situation. Many of the speakers have suggested there's some sort of equality between Israel and Hamas and calling for a ceasefire as if they were somehow equivalent. But we should remember that Hamas offered Israel a 40-year ceasefire. We should also remember that there was a complete ceasefire adhered to by Hamas from May until November 2008. But then Hamas at that stage said that they could not continue with the ceasefire while one and a half million people were under siege with only six hours electricity a day, with no food, with no medicine, with their schools and hospitals and infrastructure being starved by the Israeli siege that has gone on now for a year and a half because Hamas was elected democratically by the people of Palestine. Each evening on our news, on our TV screens, we hear about something called a conflict. It's a conflict. This is a sanitization. What we're witnessing in Gaza is a massacre. It, and it's a massacre hidden by lies. Lie one. 
Israel can't talk to Hamas because Hamas is only interested in bombing Israel. In fact, Hamas repeatedly offered peace talks from the moment it was elected, democratically elected in 2006. Israel turned down those offers because Israel is only interested in crushing and driving out Palestinians. While Hamas offered peace, Israel planned to level Gaza's neighbourhoods. Lie two. Hamas broke the ceasefire. Not true. It, the Israeli army broke the ceasefire when it launched its raid in early November and it had planned the attack for eight months and the lies multiply. Every time they bomb a school, every time they bomb a hospital, they have a ready lie ready to cover it up. And underneath all of those, perhaps, is the biggest lie of all. That the victims, the victims are actually the people to blame. The tragedy in Gaza is a crime against all people. Muslim, Christian, Jewish, atheist. The debate about the future of the Middle East must not become the Muslim world against the Western world. It must be a debate about finding a lasting peace, agreed by all sides. This must start with the immediate ceasefire and must then be followed with meaningful negotiations facilitated by the EU and the new American administration. Our efforts must be focused on building the peace so that our children and grandchildren can live in it. Thank you very much. One lie which Pete Smith overlooked was that the Israeli state claims to be acting on behalf of all Jews, and this isn't true. On Saturday last week there was a massive demonstration through London, and there were more Jews on that demonstration from Britain and Jews demonstrating around the world against the war. 10,000 people marched through Tel Aviv, which is a predominantly Jewish city in Israel last week, against the war. And when the uh, pro-Israeli people had a demonstration last Sunday in Hyde Park, there were barely 4,000 people on it, and a number of those were British nationalists and other far-right extremists from this country. The truth is that Israel does not represent Jewish people. It represents a colonialist project in the Middle East, and we hand, hold out our hand in friendship to the Jewish people of the world who have the same interests of peace as we do. The media tell us that the conflict is a conflict between Arabs and Jews. I don't believe that this is the case. The conflict is one between those who support the Zionist state of Israel and those who oppose the oppression of the Palestinian people. The Israeli state says that it's a, it's a Jewish and democratic state. Well, that means necessarily that anybody who is not a Jew doesn't have the same rights as, uh, as Jews. I mean, if you think about the equivalent, what, what would that be over here? You're only a full citizen if you support the monarchy. We've got an open wound here that has not been allowed to heal. It's not been allowed to heal because we've treated it with bombs, with rockets, with anger, with division. That will not heal this open wound. We need something completely different. Love support. We have to go to the point where we actually go in there, hand out the food, put back the borders that should exist. We need to go in there not with bombs that will actually kill people, but with food that will feed people. Now that will not happen with our anger. Two years ago, four of us from Swindon went to visit Palestine to the town of Beit Fajal, where we have a sort of a friendship relationship with. And one of the most remarkable things about the Palestinian people is how tolerant and diverse they are. There is no hostility to Jews amongst the Palestinian people, although they have a lot of hostility to the Israeli state. The Palestinian people are a remarkably diverse bunch. There are Christians, there are Muslims, there are atheists, there are people of all sorts of political persuasion. It's a country which is incredibly well educated. 80% of women, believe it or not, go on to get the equivalent of A-levels. I wish we could achieve the same amount of educational attainment in this country. It's a, it's a very extraordinary country where people have suffered, but they have also shown a great deal of resilience. And all they say is, when you say to them, do you believe in one state, two states, they say, we don't really care. We just want to be going to get on with our lives. And what I'm going to ask now is two minutes silence and then we will disperse. This is two minutes silence for all the dead of the conflict on both sides.